James, great to have you here on the show. Thank you coming for coming into the studio. So tell me a little bit about James, age 16. Suddenly you went into <laughs> business. Shouldn't you have been playing football or... Yeah, I was dyslexic. Trying to get pints at the pub or something? <laughs> yeah, I did that. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, I was dyslexic at school, and um, so school was never for me, and I moved to London to study uh, musical theatre and drama and did 18 months, and by the time I was 18 years old, I started my own events company, and... And the rest is history, as they say. So, uh, and here I am today. I didn't know you were dyslexic. So many entrepreneurs are dyslexic. It's, it's unbelievable, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. Why yeah, yeah. is that? Um, I think it's the way we think and the way we do things. And I actually believe that good business, um, it takes collaboration. Yeah. And I think dyslexics, we grow up having to collaborate and having to ask for help and having to rely on other people. And therefore, it becomes a natural business thing. You trust people to do their jobs and you trust people to partner with and things like that. I have a fantastic business partner who you know, has been to university from a very good university. He's a very smart guy and we work really, really well together as a result of that. And uh, without people like that in my life, I would definitely not be here today. So tell us about your latest business adventure, co-founding Crowdify Global. What exactly is it? Um, so um, we are a digital marketing business and branding business for websites. Yeah, I've got the events company background. Obviously, I found myself in the pandemic, like everybody else, in a bit of a difficult situation mm -hmm. um, where we lost 95% of our revenue across two companies pretty much overnight. Luckily, six months before we'd founded Crowdify, um, I took my senior leadership team and uh, not one to bow down from a fight. We, uh, we put all our effort into Crowdify and uh, we grew it to be a million pound business in the space of about 12 months. Um, and we're working with companies now all, all over the world. Good for you. And tell me about what's your view of sort of the business climate at the moment here in Britain? We're meant to be in the middle of a V-shaped recovery from the pandemic, <laughs> a sort of surge. You know, the Treasury was forecasting until quite recently we'd be growing at 6% this year, yeah. which is a huge number yeah. for an economy like the, the UK to expand in a single year. It's going to be much, much less than that. What are you seeing out there on the business front line? We often report things here on the money which are pretty, pretty tough, consumer issues, cost of living crisis... But is there good news out there? Are you seeing wealth being created? Are you seeing jobs being created? I'm certainly seeing jobs being created. I think we sit in a really interesting position. I think as a business owner now, I've got five companies. Um, I sit in different fields, and so I'm seeing different patterns. I think it's very easy for um, a business owner to make an assumption based upon one industry or upon one pattern. I'm seeing a lot of new startups. I'm seeing a lot of smart people with smart ideas, just like the gentleman you just had on your show about his work from home slash office hybrid type product um, and then I'm seeing consumers start to get confidence I think we're missing tourism in a big way I think yeah. any business in tourism is still suffering I think the idea that restaurant bookings and hotel bookings and things were at 90% is Town centres are still a bit slow aren't they I totally because agree people are working from home that's correct yeah and then we're seeing um, businesses Patterns change, you know, um, Aprils and Mays are traditionally busy. You're seeing a lot of people, Easter holidays, the central London wasn't very busy this, yeah. this year. Um, the, the events and things we had going on in central London weren't busy. And yet the things out of town on the Brightons and the Bournemouths and the Southamptons, they were very busy. There's a lot of British people going to the coast that were not going abroad. And then people taking advantage of finally going abroad after being locked down for such a long period of time. So um, it really is an interesting landscape at the moment if you're a business owner. So there's positive business business sentiment trying to burst through what Correct. in general terms what it's great because you are involved in so many different businesses and to get your perspective on this in general terms what do you think about the business climate the government's creating in terms of taxation levels regulation could they make life easier for you should they <laughs> um i think they could definitely make life easier for us um, you know, the idea that we're, we're the, the uh, employers and I is going up and um, corporation tax is going up, it just puts more pressure on the employer, especially at a time when employees are looking to business owners at a time of inflation and looking at us for potential pay rises and opportunities within the businesses. It's very hard for us to employ more people, to put out pay rises when we've got debt hanging over our heads from COVID, from bounce back loans and you know, some businesses had to get alternative loans out. We're still under a lot of pressure and I think it's very easy at the moment to sort of six months in of, let's call it the good times, I, mm. I don't put that name too much to, to it, but yeah, but let's go for it and forget that actually December we, we were having a COVID problem, mm. you know, and now April everything's starting to look a lot rosier. Mm. We're still under an awful lot of pressure and mm. I think business owners, we're going to be under that pressure for three, four and five years and mm. I'm one of the lucky ones I came out of it with with two new companies and and in, in, in a position that uh, you know we're bigger than we ever were before however there's a lot of business owners but even then I have an amount of debt to manage and sure. and, 
and uh, a uh, awareness of the future that at any point I could potentially be closed. Just tell yeah. us at the end, James, about what you're doing, what British entrepreneurs in general are doing uh, when it comes to Ukraine. So I'm a member of the Entrepreneurs' Organisation um, and we moved really, really quickly. We're a global network of seven-figure-plus owners of, of businesses. Um, and we moved very, very quickly to set up a, um, a delivery channel into Ukraine for aid. Um, so I set up a hub from my office where you can deliver stuff to my office in Islington. Um, we repack that for you. We take that out. We put that onto um, lorries at Brothers pa uh, Parcel Post in Maidstone. And that goes out to Lviv in, um, in Ukraine, Ukraine and then is distributed from there. And so far, um, we call it the 10,000 campaign because we're trying to put together 10,000 um, items of different products, toothpaste, toothbrushes, head torches, water bottles, um, just, just as much as we can get our hands on. Um, we've done about five van loads so far, um, although Brothers pa uh, Parcel Post and are this doing... this is all, all do donated products? All donated right? products, yeah. Last week, for example, we had um, a pharmaceutical business give us 5,000 ibuprofen. Um, mm. We've had Pampers, we've had... Uh, wet wipes, we've had toothpaste, we've had just about you know, baby food. All these things are really needed. And the crisis in Ukraine, five million people now. I mean, what a number. And, and in, this, in our lifetime, mm. in this lifetime, you know, it's, mm. it's, um, I think business owners, we have the opportunity to step up and utilise our networks as best we can. And, you know, many hands make light work. If everyone donates one tin of food, um, we can get an awful lot of food over, over to Ukraine to help those people.